Now with the simulation complete, let's have a look at the results. The first thing that was done was a default transformation with the reflection along the YZ plane. This would mean that when you create the pressure contours, the shape would be reflected. Looking at the side view, you can see the stagnation point around the nose. You can see then that the pressure increases mid fairing and then decreases. And if you look at the top, we see a similar profile. We see stagnation at the front here, lower pressure mid fairing, so we've got a favorable pressure gradient. And then from mid fairing to the end, we can see that pressure increases, showing an unfavorable pressure gradient. Now looking at the turbulent kinetic energy, there was some turbulence in the inlet that was defined within the inlet boundary conditions. So what we can do is that we can clip the surface, we can see straight away the size of the actual wake that's created. What we can also do is we can create a plane from the axes and create the turbulent kinetic energy on that as well. So we can see again a bit of turbulence at the inlet, clipping that shows us that we actually have quite a small wake. The next thing we can do is show the velocity on the symmetry plane. So again, we can see roughly what's happening. So we've got stagnation point around here. We've got velocity increasing as the geometry changes. And then we have the wake region at the back. We can then take that velocity and put it on the plane. So we can see again the size of the actual wake. Next is a wall shear. So by plotting the wall shear and clipping the values, from 0 to 1, we can see where the flow has separated. So it's 0 around the front here due to the stagnation point, but we can see towards the back that the flow is actually separated around this region towards the rear and underneath the fairing as well. Looking at the Y+, plus, it's different to the 2D contours due to the change in the flow, but it's still within the law of the wall, so we're still capturing over the 30 Y plus value in areas of interest. Next is checking out the turbulent viscosity ratio. So we can see here that we can, we've captured the transition from dark to light and we've got a couple extra cells. So what we can do in the future is go back and reduce the amount of cells in the boundary layer. We can then go through and understand the CL and CD, making sure to include the front wheel and rear wheel within the calculations.